Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Herbert Marshall, Ingrid Bergman, and Gail Patrick in Intermezzo, a love story. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, a new star comes to the stage of the Lux Radio Theater, and our date with her was made by a telephone call to Sweden. Miss Ingrid Bergman who is one of the Hollywood finds of the year, makes her American radio debut in our drama, Intermezzo, because we couldn't imagine anyone else in the role she played so powerfully on the screen. Intermezzo is a love story, a story both old and new, old because it's a love story, new because it represents a distinct improvement on a familiar theme, just as the new Quick Lux is an improvement on a tried and true product. Science is constantly bettering things for us, and Lux Flakes keeps pace with the march of science. Miss Bergman was discovered by David O. Selznick and brought here from Sweden to make Intermezzo. After finishing the picture, she went back home. That's where our telephone call comes in. We reached her at Stockholm and made arrangements for tonight's play when she returned to resume work at the Selznick studio. But it was really you who cast Herbert Marshall in the co-starring role. We received so many letters asking... When are you going to have Herbert Marshall again? That we've seized this opportunity to have him play Holger Brandt. And let me congratulate you on a job of perfect casting. To complete the triangle of our love story, we have Gail Patrick as Holger Brandt's wife, Margaret. She's a very different character from the wife in a conventional dramatic triangle. But as I told you before, this is a new love story. Even though our, our lazier playwrights had been insisting for years that there was no such thing as a new love story. Intermezzo, of course, is a musical term, meaning an interlude or intermission, a time to relax. So I suggest that you relax now and listen as we ring up the curtain on our play Intermezzo, starring Herbert Marshall as Holger Brandt, Ingrid Bergman as Anita, and Gail Patrick as Margaret, with Anne Todd and Douglas Scott of the screencast as the children, Anne-Marie and Eric. In New York City's famous Carnegie Hall, a violin recital nears its close. It's the second encore, and the audience, breathless with excitement, has crowded into the aisles and as close to the stage as possible, where Holger Brandt is playing, for the first time, his own composition, Intermezzo. From his magic bow, the music soars to the high dome of the hall, whispers along the walls, and then... All too soon, the concert ends. Ladies and gentlemen, first let me say how much I appreciate the reception you have given us here on our last concert in New York. My accompanist Thomas Steinborg and I leave America for our home in Sweden with the deepest gratitude for the warmth of your response to our performances here. <laughs> and now, I should like to say a few words about something that for me saddens this happy evening, as I'm afraid it will you. Mr. Steinborg, will you come out here, please? Thomas, come out. Oh, God, what are you thinking of? Don't be a fool, man. It's time you took some of the vows. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steinborg is more than my accompanist. He is my old friend. He is my collaborator, from whom I have learned much of whatever I know of music. It is therefore with the deepest regret that I must announce that after many years of travel and adventure together, I must henceforth go my way alone. Mr. Steinberg is abandoning me to settle down to a well-earned retirement. Will you join me in paying tribute to one of the finest musicians and, more important, one of the finest men 
it has ever been my privilege to know. Thank you. Thank you. Calder, you shouldn't have done this. True, Thomas. Every word of it. But I... Uh, I... Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll meet you in the wings. And now, if you'll permit us, we must run. You see, like so many of you, we are family men. And tonight, a boat sails that will take us back to Stockholm. A boat that will take us home. Thomas. Yes? Thomas, is your decision final? You really mean to leave me and retire? Yes, the time's come, Holger. Won't you miss it all? The work, the crowds, the applause. All the world as we've had it. Perhaps a little, but there's a great difference between us, Holger. You are indispensable to the world and the world to you. Let's have a drink. Your flame leaps, Holger, at every breath of life. Some of us glow a while and aren't too regretful when the spark dies out and allows us to rest. We'll have memories in common always, Thomas. Memories. And the same old friends. Bach and Beethoven. Old Thomas. Sitting by the fire with his slippers and his pipe. And my wife. Yes, of course, your wife. I should be glad to see Margaret again, too, and the children. Seems years since I left them. You know, Thomas, you're right. The crowds, applause, they're like a drug. Like a habit that gets a stranglehold on your life, and you can't break it, except by total abstinence. Stay home, away from it all, and you'll find peace. I wish I could believe it, with the same conviction I say it. <laughs> well, anyway, Thomas, for 20 years of comradeship and the art we both love, and for your flawless friendship, thank you. Thank you, Holger. So nice having you here. Oh, 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 oh you know, Margaret, there's better air to breathe in this room than anywhere else on Earth. I can hardly believe I've been away. Nothing's changed. If anybody ever moved anything in here, even an inch, Mother always moved it right back again, <laughs> oh. where you like. <laughs> you had your own room to upset, Eric. Eric's building a railroad upstairs, Holger. Not a railroad, Mother. A rope haul for carrying magnesite from the mines to the factories. Really? I'd like to have a look at it. Well, it's not finished yet, sir. Maybe I could help. No, I don't think so, sir. <laughs> I don't blame you, Eric. Daddy, I play the piano, Daddy. I take lessons. Do you? Do you want to hear me? A little later, darling. Daddy has so much to do. Will you play your violin with me, Daddy? I should say I will. <laughs> darling, take Angus upstairs, please. <laughs> All right. But I'm coming straight back. Well, Margaret. Welcome home, Holger. Darling, if you knew how often I've thought of this moment. Home. There you are, young lady. What do you think of that? You played some wrong notes. What? I did nothing of the kind. Yes, you did. It made me dizzy. Indeed. You mean this? Yes. It's terrible. Those are called dissonant chords, darling. You'll learn to play them, too. No. I don't want to. Then you'll just be a very old-fashioned musician. That's what I want to be. Good morning, Anne-Marie. Miss Hoffman. Oh, uh, I hope I haven't interrupted anything. Not at all. Daddy, this is Miss Hoffman. She's my music teacher. How do you do? How do you do? I've been hearing a great deal about you, Miss Hoffman. Now, there's one thing I know for certain. Yes? Yeah? You've been teaching your pupil plenty of self-confidence. She's been correcting me. She says I play false. Oh, Anne-Marie. <laughs> I wouldn't take that criticism too hard, Mr. Mm. Brandt. Anne-Marie's very talented, but... But she may have been mistaken. Well, let's hope so, anyway. How long have you been teaching her? Oh, uh, a little under a year. I hope it's been satisfactory. Uh, I'm hardly more than a pupil myself. With whom? With uh, several teachers. But now that Mr. Steinberg has returned, uh, I'm hoping he'll take me. Steinberg, you couldn't find anyone better. 
I'll see that he does take you. You will? Oh, thank you, Mr. Brandon. Not a bit. Now, run along, Anne-Marie. It must be time for your lesson. Yes, it is. Come, Anne-Marie. Bye, Daddy. Bye. Olga. Mm-hmm? What are you thinking of? Oh, nothing except... Margaret, it strikes me I'm something of a stranger here. How can you say such a thing? Mm, little things. The children make me realize it. But then it's natural that it should be that way. You've been away from us so much, and this last time it's been so long. I know. Margaret, I'm going to do what Thomas has done. Settle down. <laughs> My darling, when you're ready for that, you won't say it so desperately, with that determined look in your eye. <laughs> I suppose you're right. But, Margaret, you're coming away with me. But, darling... We're going away together again, and everything will be just as it was in the beginning. We'll make life rich and gay and exciting again. <laughs> How wonderful it was. Missing trains and boats, losing all our belongings, and never caring. Do you remember the first time we went away like that? It was winter here when we left. We crossed the Alps, and suddenly it was spring. You said that the blossoming locusts in Capri was what made everyone sing there. Remember? Yes. It's as if you were telling me a fairy tale. Once upon a time. But things are different now, Holger. How? We have a home. It won't run away. And we'll come back to it and appreciate it all the more. But the children... Oh, they can get along without you for a while. It's good for children to learn to take care of themselves. Now, really, Holger. And Marie's only six. <laughs> Please, her dear. Don't think that I wouldn't love to go. But you don't realize that these things are my responsibilities just as... Well, just as concerts and practice are yours. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Anne-Marie, you mustn't. Mommy, I've just thought of something. Oh, Anne-Marie. Something important, Mommy. What is it, dear? May I invite Miss Hoffman to my birthday party? Oh, but Anne-Marie, tell Miss Hoffman that she's very welcome to your birthday party. Miss Hoffman, you're very welcome to my birthday party. We're going to have ice cream and cake. Well, I, I didn't really mean to, Mrs. Brand. Anne-Marie will be very disappointed if you don't come. And so will we. Very well. Thank you. That's settled. Now we can go on with the lesson. Come on, Miss Hoffman. You like the ice cream and cake, Miss Hoffman. Oh, I'm sure I would. You see, Holger, all these world-shaking problems that keep me here, I'm content to stay, to make this the place you'll come back to, always. And that spring you spoke of, that sort of thing comes only once in a lifetime. Let it be what it is, a memory. And who knows, we might perhaps have another spring. Lovely cake, isn't it? How many cans? Seven. No, eight. One to grow on. Good, good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are very privileged people. Our hostess was told that she could invite whom she liked for her birthday, and she asked for an entirely grown-up party. Her father and mother, whom I think she felt she couldn't very well leave out. <laughs> her brother, the rising young engineer. Her godfather, Uncle Thomas. Her other godfather, Uncle Charles Muller, my worthy business manager. Thank you. <laughs> and her new friend and teacher, Miss Anita Hoffman, whom we are happy to welcome to the family circle. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the health of our hostess with 70 times 7. Miss Anne Marie Brand. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Olga. May I have a word with you? Well, Charles? Holger, Thomas is determined not to travel again. I told you that. So I have been very busy. I've been combing the continent for a new accompanist, and I believe I found one. You have? I want you to come to a concert with me next week. He's marvelous. Mm, very well. The man is exactly the thing you want. I heard him last... Listen. Week. What? Quiet. Can that be Miss Hoffman? Well, I imagine so. Well, she's good. I didn't realize... Holger, she's only a pupil. Wait till you hear the man that I... Quiet, please. I want to listen. Well, Holger, what did you think of the recital? Wouldn't he make a good accompanist? He won't do. Holger. I tell you, he won't do. That's all there is to it. Oh, Lord. Well, I will keep looking. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. Why? 
Oh. Miss Hoffman. Oh, Mr. Brand, good evening. And Mr. Miller. Good evening. How are you this evening, Miss Hoffman? Very well, thank you. Isn't uh, Mrs. Brandt with you? No, we had social obligations. Uh -huh. I'm a fugitive from a dull dinner party. Well, what should we do now? What would you say to a glass of wine somewhere? Well, I, I was just going home. So was I, but what about you, Charles? Oh, no, 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 leave me out. <laughs> I'm ready for bed after all that highbrow music. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Miss Hoffman. Oh, but... Uh... Let him go. Music wears him out. There must be a cafe nearby. Yes, uh, there's a funny, stuffy little place down the street. Always crowded. Well, they have to put out the lights to get rid of the customers. Oh, you have been there? Not in a long time. It's just what we want. Come along. Oh, I adore the concert. You did like it, didn't you? Mm. You have the look in your eye of someone who's made a feast of music. How I envy that pianist. You'd like to do that, wouldn't you? Be on that concert stage. Oh, yes. Yes. I'll tell you something. I'd rather it have been you up there playing. Oh, you are not serious. Certainly I am. Good Lord, I'm stupid. Why, of course. Why don't you accompany me? Accompany you? Yes, yes, on tour. Take Thomas's place. Oh, you don't mean it. But I do. Why didn't I think of it the moment I heard you play? Well, what are you thinking? What do you say? No, no, I... I couldn't do it. Even if you meant it. Why couldn't you? Oh, Mr. Steinberg would never forgive me if I gave up my studies. Thomas would approve completely. He knows how desperately I need an accompanist. And he'd be delighted that you'd taken his place. No, but... But I, I please try to understand. Don't you think it's best for me to stay and work as hard as I can for a scholarship? Scholarship? Yes. In the Royal Academy. There is a chance. Oh, I didn't know. But of course you should stay and continue your studies. That you would even consider me it. Yes, it, yes, you're profoundly honored and all that. I am, really. I understand. We'll say no more about it. Ah, oh, you know, I've forgotten about places like this. The haven of the rising musicians. The look one sees in all these faces. <laughs> and yet it seems scarcely any, any time at all since I sat here with just such boys and girls remaking the world to suit ourselves, as they're doing now. Pardon? I would like to have known you then. Would you? Probably not. I was poor and awkward, much too earnest and worked too hard. All in all, not a very fetching fellow. I don't believe you. Everyone here, each of these boys and girls, expects to set the world on fire. Yes, and perhaps one or two may do it. Perhaps it'll be you. <laughs> oh. oh, please, don't laugh at what I'm going to say. Why should I? Well, since I first began to care about music, oh, it, it does seem so strange. Tell me, what? I had only one idea. For years, I saved every penny I could to be able to buy some kind of a seat in the concert hall whenever you played. It's nice of you to tell me that. Oh, nice of me. Think, think of my being able to tell it to you. Oh, that, that's what I can't get over. Here I am talking to you as if as if you were an old friend. I am a friend. Yes, but just a little while ago, I looked at you from such a distance, and now... I... Oh, you don't know how fantastic it seems to me to be here at this moment. Well... <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Don't drink that. Just ordinary wine. Waiter, a bottle of your best vintage champagne. Very good, sir. Oh, champagne? For that state of mind described as being in awe of someone, there's no quicker corrective than good champagne. Two glasses, and in 20 minutes, strangers have shared a rich and happy past. You know, Anita, there comes a night each year when one senses that winter is suddenly over. Yes, that spring has come. Oh, I look forward to it through the dreary month. Look, down there at the river, hmm. the ice. There's the winter, all broken, rushing out to sea. A wonderful final journey. Don't you feel when spring comes that the world is yours for the asking? That there's nothing that you couldn't be? For tonight, tonight I would dare anything. Oh, <laughs> oh, perhaps it's only the champagne. Do you know what you remind me of? Tell me. A Viennese waltz, smiling but melancholy. A melody of the days when Vienna was a happy city. 
What a poet you are. At twilight in the spring, and music poured through the cafe doors, melodies of carefree youth. It was there that I saw you for the first time. Phantom of the Viennese Wars. No, I'm wrong. It wasn't there at all I met you. It was in Budapest on a summer night. They were playing the rustle of spring. That was you. <laughs> oh, what are you thinking of? I'm listening. There's something coming. I don't know what. Spring, perhaps. Spring. Yes, perhaps. I... Oh, it's getting cold. Now it's coming. The spring storm. I... I must go home. Good night. Thank you. Anita. Anita. <laughs> Just a moment, Mr. DeMille brings you Act Two of Intermezzo with Herbert Marshall, Ingrid Bergman, and Gail Patrick. Have you ever thought of the various words that express speed? If you'll take a look at your dictionary sometime, you'll find most of them contain the letter S. Like swift? Yes, and sprint. And uh, scurry and scamper. Why, I know a whole sentence of fairly shout speed has got so many S's. Well, let's hear it, Zoe. New Quick Lux is so speedy and swift, it suds in a second. You never said a truer thing in your life, Sally. An added ingredient makes new quick lux burst into suds at the touch of water. In water as cool as your hand, it dissolves three times as fast as any of ten other leading soaps tested. New quick lux suds so fast, it's thrilling women all over the country. For example, there's Miss Kay Dickerson of East Orange, New Jersey. Will you read what she wrote, Sally? Of course. She says, I've been using Lux for years for all my washables. I always thought it was so wonderful it couldn't be improved. But somehow, some way, you've done it. New Quick Lux is simply astounding. It's so amazingly fast. New Quick Lux is fast, but it's more than that. It goes further. Gives you more suds, ounce for ounce, than any of ten other soaps tested. That makes it thrifty to use for sweaters, blouses, stockings, underthings. Oh, that reminds me. Miss Dickerson said something about that. Let me see. Oh, here it is. It's so easy to freshen undies with new quick lux. The colors look lovely, and they stay new looking longer, too. You better make a note of that, all you ladies who want your things to stay new looking longer. And make a note on your shopping list to buy the big box of new quick lux tomorrow. Your grocer has it now in the same familiar box at no extra cost to you. I know you'll like new quick lux. It's so amazingly fast, so thrifty, and so very safe for everything safe in water alone. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Intermezzo. Starring Ingrid Bergman as Anita, Herbert Marshall as Holger, and Gail Patrick as Margaret, with Douglas Scott as Eric, and Anne Todd as Anne Marie. <laughs> Weeks pass, and the friendship of Anita and Halga has ripened into a far deeper emotion. Now the spring has really come at last. In Thomas Stenborg's home, Anita sits at the piano. All the hopelessness of her love is expressed in the only way she knows, through music. Stenborg comes quietly into the room and stands behind her, a worried frown on his face. Aren't you giving it too much importance? You were going at it as if it were the climax of a tremendous symphony. I... I wasn't conscious of it. Mr. Steinberg, I'm thinking of going away. Are you really? For long? I am... Um, I've been invited to visit relatives in Denmark. I can stay as long as I want. I see. They won't divert you too much. You'll be able to study. If I like. Don't talk as if that weren't important. You've applied for that scholarship, you know. Yes, of course. 
I'll try to study here by myself. Little Anne-Marie will have to find someone else to teach her. Yes. And so, you are running away from it all. From him. I thought you must have known. Yes. Well, perhaps it's best that way. Life sometimes moves in strange ways to give us experience. And often this experience is gained only through our greatest mistakes. I thought I was going straight to my goal. Thinking of nothing but my work and now... I, I can't explain it to you. Don't try. Nothing is altogether dependable. Not the weather, destiny, nor ourselves. Will this be our last lesson? Yes. If you'll excuse me, I, I think I ought to go and see Mrs. Brandt. Certainly, do that. Anita, you're waiting for me to say something very wise and helpful. But I'll say to you only what I say to myself when things seem too difficult. Courage, my friend. Courage. Anita, here. I thought you were never coming. You see, you spoiled me by always being on time. There was someone I had to see, Holger. That sounds very serious. Someone I had to see. Anything wrong, Anita? Oh, nothing. May I have a glass of wine? Something has gone wrong. Tell me. Please. No, you're frightening me. Oh, but I'm frightened. You must realize how I feel. It can't go on like this. Oh, it simply can't go on. Don't you see that? Why do you upset yourself now? Oh, all along I've been miserable. Hating this kind of thing. Always meeting you like this in out-of-the-way places. Little dark corners, sneaking about in fear of being seen. It's not the way I'd like it to be. How else could we go on seeing each other? Oh, I'm ashamed. And I hate being ashamed. We've had so many hours of happiness. Gay, friendly hours. They've been beautiful. Nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, Holger, look in the mirror there, on the wall. How do we look to you? Don't be so dramatic. Oh, well, you don't like it any more than I do. We look what we feel. Two guilty people. Is it a crime for me to love you, Anita? Why, why did it have to be the way it is? If only we hadn't met. Do you really wish we hadn't? Yes, now I do. I haven't any right to be happy the way I am happy when I am with you. Anita. No, no. I can't listen. You will go on justifying us both, I know. And I'm fighting to be sensible. Sensible? That's a word seldom used in love. Love isn't sensible. Oh, Holger. There are some things I can't bring myself to say. I know, I know. I have a home. I have children. I'm a respected, responsible man. But as I sit here looking at you, I know only one thing. I do, too. We must end it. We've got to stop seeing each other. Can we? We must. We can't go on lying to ourselves and to people who trust us. It's impossible, unbearable. We'll just say goodbye and stop seeing each other. That's very simple, isn't it? We've got to find the strength for it. You're right. Goodbye, Anita. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Not here. I'm not sitting like this. No. Let's get out. Let's walk. Anita. The days are so long now, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> you know that there used to be a shop near here. I always stopped to look in. All kinds of funny lost things in the window. Oh, here it is. What a strange collection of things. Anita, look. Look at that curious clock. Holger, I'm going. I'm going now, quickly, as if it didn't matter. Oh, don't kiss me. Don't say anything. Don't turn around. No. Goodbye, Holger. Goodbye, Anita. Would you like some? 
something, Halter? A brandy or coffee? No, thank you. Are things going along well? Yes, quite well. I had a rather difficult time with Anne Marie today. She's very upset about Miss Hoffman leaving. Leaving? Didn't you know? She was here today to tell us. She's going to Denmark. She won't be back for a long time. I see. Have you found an accomplice yet? No. No, it's all uh, not definite yet. But you're leaving on another tour soon. Yes, I shall be leaving soon. Will you be away long? I don't know. I, I can't say. Holger, I want to go along this time. To go along? Yes. Yes, I can arrange everything here. I want to be with you on the tour, as you suggested before. We will go back, have some of those lovely, irresponsible days, be together in strange places as we used to be. I still want something of life. I don't want to be left behind. Does that sound vain and frivolous coming from me? Holger, can't we do it? Wouldn't you like it? I see. You're answering me. You might just as well be seeing it. I know what it is. Margaret, I must talk to you. No, never mind. Forget what I said. Margaret, we must talk now. Listen to me. Hello, Dad. Hello, Mother. Come in, Eric. Did you ask him for me, Mother? No, I forgot. Eric wants to go to see a picture this evening, Holger. I've done all my lessons. Is it all right, Dad? It's a good movie. Certainly. Uh, could you let me have some money? Here. Yeah. Thanks. Margaret, I'm sorry. More than I can tell you. Mother... Something's wrong with Dad. Yes. What is it, Mother? You were talking when I came in. What's the matter? Eric, go upstairs, darling. There's nothing we can do. Nothing. Anita. Anita. Oh, wait, you can't. You mustn't go. Oh, Holger, how could you do this? I could... I can't face it. I can't face being without you. But we promised each other. Is it as easy as that? Can you just get on a train and ride away from life? Oh, please. What you'd leave would haunt you. Haunt us both the rest of our days. All aboard. Oh, you are not being fair. It's no easier for me. At this very moment, my fate is being decided. A life with you or a life alone. You are not alone, Holger. It's I who am alone. We're both alone, Anita. I've broken with my past, with everything... I have no home any longer. All aboard. Oh, Holger, you couldn't have... Oh, what did you say to her, to your wife? She wouldn't have borne the lies any more than I could. I know her. And anyway, she always, she already knew the truth. She told me first, really. Oh, Holger. How could you hurt her like that? And what will happen now? Albert Hall, London, May the 3rd. Holger Brandt, violinist. Accompanist, Anita Hoffman. Concert Hall in Vienna, Holger Brandt. Accompanist, Fräulein Anita Hoffman. Conservatoire de Paris, Holger Brandt, Mademoiselle Anita Hoffman. Now, what do you think? Four encores? Oh, I think the audience told it too. Huh? You play better than I have ever heard you play before. I wonder why. <laughs> and you, you surpassed yourself too. Oh, but well, that's no mystery. Oh, Holger, I love you. That was what they heard tonight when I played. I, I hope it's true that I've helped you a little. But it's not only that. Only what? Oh, what am I? Your shadow. I don't exist without you. You're not a shadow, my dearest. Don't talk nonsense. Oh, but it's enough. Yes? Let me be with you like this. That's all I ask. And will that be enough always? Yes. Always. Our last concert. We can rest a while now. Oh, it's been the greatest happiness I've ever known. The greatest I'll ever know, I'm sure. How can you be sure of that? Such happiness couldn't come more than once in one's life. I know it couldn't. Could it, Holger? 
Anita, let's not speculate on happiness. Here we are, and work is over for a while. I was forgetting. We must go home now. Home? Without a holiday? I thought a few weeks on the Riviera, away from the crowds, the noise. Oh, Anita, the place I know, on a hill overlooking the sea. No, 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 we, we can't. Dearest, listen to me. You asked only to be with me. To be near me. Well, that's all I ask, too. To know that I can see you, that I can call your name and you'll be near. That's all. No, I'll get it. Oh, home. Mr. DeMille brings you Act Three of Intermezzo with Ingrid Bergman, Herbert Marshall, and Gail Patrick in just a moment. During this brief intermission, we bring you a little scene that might happen anywhere later this evening. Oh, oh I'm so sleepy. Let's go to bed. Okay. As soon as I untangle myself from this chair. Oops. <laughs> There goes another run. Gosh, I'm sick of them. Well, I don't wonder you get them the way you treat your stockings. Well, what do you mean? It isn't my fault. It certainly is. It's simply scandalous the way you rub your stockings with cake soap every night. Well, what can a girl do? You can cut down on runs with new quick luck the way I do. Come along to the bathroom and I'll show you. <laughs> Now, look, I'll just pour a few of these flakes into the basin and turn on the water. My goodness, those suds certainly bubbled up fast. Mm-hmm, suds in a second. That's new quick lux for you. Now, I'll just swish my stockings through the suds like this. See? There's no rubbing with new quick lux. Get that? No rubbing. Yes, I get it. Gosh, it's certainly easy doing stockings this way. I guess I'll lux mine every night after this. You'd better, if you want to cut down on those runs of yours. Yes, it takes almost no time to do your stockings every night with new quick lux. Costs almost nothing, too, because such a few flakes give you such rich suds. And this lux habit saves you many a dollar, because it saves you many a run. And that's important. Your stockings stay nice and elastic, so they give under strain instead of breaking into runs easily. Now, why don't you do this? Ask your grocer for the big box of new Quick Lux tomorrow. He has it now in the same familiar box at no extra cost to you. Use it for your stockings and other nice things to keep them new looking longer. It's so fast, so thrifty, so wonderfully safe for all your washables. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Continue with Act Three of Intermezzo. In a tiny town on the shore of the blue Mediterranean, a rustic inn overlooks the sea. In this place of enchantment, Holger and Anita are happier than they've ever been in all their lives. But now a letter comes for Anita from far off Sweden. A letter from Thomas Stenborg. My dear Anita, the Royal Academy of Music has awarded you the Jenny Lynn Scholarship for 1939. For this is a great achievement. I hope you will not let anything interfere with the fulfillment of the bright future now within your reach. Faithfully, Thomas Stenborg. Oh, Holger! Holger! Oh, Holger! What's all the excitement? This look. What is it? If it's an invitation, don't think I'll let you out of my sight, not for a single moment. Oh. Well, aren't you going to tell me? Uh, no. No, not now. Oh, no. Anyway, it's, it's nothing to get excited about. Oh, I'm starving. Dinner's ready, isn't it? Anita, is the letter important? Of course, it would rather be mysterious. Oh, 
I don't want to make you jealous. <laughs> oh, it's from Thomas. From Thomas? Mm. Oh, and filled with recriminations, I suppose. What did he have to say? He was just writing to me. Yes, not about the weather. No. <laughs> oh, Holger, it's, it's only that I was awarded a scholarship. Only? Were you going to hide it from me? Why? I don't. I don't want the scholarship now, Holger. I'm not taking it. I see. And what does Thomas advise? Oh, please, Holger. Let's forget it. Oh, it's so pleasant out here. What's that fragrance? Mimosa? Anita. Yes? Where's the letter? Let me read it. No, no, Holger. Let's pretend it never came. Look. Anita, don't. There. It's all gone. That's how I feel about the letter. About any word or thought that could come between us. Anita. Monsieur Brandt. Yes. Monsieur Brandt. Yeah. There's a gentleman here to see you, Monsieur. Well, where? Who? Who is it? It's I, Holger. Thomas. Where did you come from? I took the chance of finding you. I. Uh... Good to see you, Thomas. You must stay, of course. I'll see you're made comfortable. It'll be very pleasant for overnight, I'm sure. Overnight? You can't run off like that. Tomorrow we're planning to have a picnic on the mountain. You must join us, Thomas. Holger, you're enjoying it here? Yes, it's perfect. Cut off from the world, the kind of life I never thought I'd have. What news of my family, Thomas? That's what I've come about. They're all well. Oh, quite well. I have a message for you from Anne-Marie. Yes? She'd like you to bring her a camera when you come home. Yes, yes, I... I will. Holger, I... I have some papers with me. Papers? Divorce papers. Oh, yes, 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 of course. I asked Margaret to let me bring them. I thought I might prevail on you to sign them. Certainly, I'll sign them later. Why not do it now, Holger, and get it over with? Thomas, you're my best friend. You don't have to use velvet gloves with me. Speak your mind. You think I've acted pretty badly, don't you? Oh, it's easy to criticize. I don't pretend I can account for someone else's feelings. Won't you sign these now? Do you think it's as easy as all that, Thomas? To cut off the best part of your life? Tear out the last roots? I thought you'd done that long ago. Yes, perhaps I did. Holger. Is it you? I've been... Mr. Steinborg. Hello, Anita. Oh, but this is wonderful. When did you get here? Have you seen Holger? Yes. How well you look. <laughs> How are you, my dear? Happy? Oh, but of course. I'm divinely happy. And this country is very beautiful. Yes. You must come with us tomorrow and see the sunrise. Holger and I and... Yes, perhaps we'll bring Marianne. Marianne? Yes. She, she's a little girl here. The innkeeper's daughter. Oh, Holger has grown very fond of her. You see, he, um, he misses Anne-Marie. Did you think he wouldn't? I've tried not to think of it at all. I've tried to pretend there was no past. And no future? It seems a very long time since I heard Holger play. Oh, by the way, let me congratulate you on your scholarship. You must be very happy about it. I don't want it. It means nothing to me now. But it meant everything to you once. Anita, my dear, you have great talent. It saddens me to think it will be wasted. If I only can be with Holger, nothing else matters. And Holger, does he feel the same way? Do you think he's unhappy with me? Do you think he can't forget the past? A man's past is never past. His roots are twined deep in the things that have made him what he is. But he loves me. I... I know we can be happy. Do you? I wonder if anyone has ever built happiness on the unhappiness of others. Oh. Oh, everything is wrong. My whole life, everything. What shall I do? That's not for me to say. You must make your own decision. Whatever it may be. I know it will be the, the right decision. Anita, Thomas, hurry down here. You've forgotten the picture. 
Mit Anita. In a moment, Holger. Mr. Steinbock, you are going on the picnic? Yes, I thought perhaps I'd better stay another day. You must help me. Of course, if I can. There's a train leaving here in an hour. My dear. When you and Holger come back, I shall be gone. You're sure it's best that way? You're not doing it only because of what I said? We both know where Holger belongs. I'm, well, say I've been an intermezzo in his life. Anita. Oh, you gave me a good word once. Courage. I'm trying to remember it. I'm trying. Anita, come along. Aren't you ready yet? Oh, Holger, I'm not coming. Not coming? Why not? I didn't sleep. I, I think I have a cold coming on. I'll wait for you outside. Dear, shall we postpone it? Oh, no, no. Don't do that. You go without me. Please. You sure you're all right? Oh, quite sure. Oh, really? Go along. Well, I'll miss you. Mm -hmm. Au revoir, dear. Goodbye, Holger. You don't like my French. Holger, wait! What is it, darling? Oh. Your hat. Oh, you, you never wear that one properly. Fix it. <laughs> now, am I perfect? Yes. Yes. Goodbye, Olga. Goodbye. Darling. Now? Holger. You knew it, didn't you? Why didn't you tell me? It was she who decided. She alone. Gone. You're not going after her, are you? No. Perhaps she was right when she said she was only an intermezzo in my life. It's over. Then you'll come home with me. Home? You think I could crawl back to Margaret now just because I'm alone with nothing, nobody? I haven't a home, a wife, children... I haven't any right to them after all the unhappiness I've caused them. That shall be my punishment, Thomas. My penance. You have been away so long, my friend. Anne-Marie keeps asking for you. I have said to her... When spring comes, he will surely return. Holger, come home. Your friend, Thomas. Holger! Holger! How are you, Thomas? I knew you'd come. I knew it. Come along, I'll get a cab. You must stay with me, of course. I'll... Uh... Thomas, wait. Please don't be offended. You see, I haven't come home to stay. I just wanted to see Anne-Marie. I brought the camera she wanted. And... But please, Thomas, let me go alone. If you wish it, Olga. Thank you. Goodbye. Thomas. Care for? Yes, there's, there's a school on the Box Home Road. Take me there, please. Right over there, driver. Just wait. Yes, sir. Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie! Anne-Marie! Wait, dear. I'll be right over. Daddy. Don't cross the street, darling. Anne-Marie, be careful. Look out for that car. Look out, Anne-Marie! Oh, no. We've been killed! No, 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 no. Let me through, oh. please. I told the children never to cross the street. I told them. Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie. Let's stand back. Send a doctor to my house. I'm her father, Holger Brand. Hurry. Margaret. Margaret, tell me, how is she? What does the doctor say? He doesn't know. She's very badly hurt. She... She tried to run to me. I called, but... Margaret, I had no right to come here. But may I stay here for a while? Just till... Just till we know. Yes. There are... 
there are so many things I must do. Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie. Oh, God, please. Please. Look at me. Talk to me. I've been away so long. You left Mother and us. And I want you to know that I'll never forgive you. Even if everybody else does. Eric. You don't know what it's been like here all this time. You haven't seen Mother crying every night and hiding it. Well, now we've learned to do without you. Why did you come back at all? We don't need you anymore. Eric, listen to me. Please. You know, when we are young, we expect the people we love to behave like gods. And most of all, our fathers, I suppose. And then, as we grow older, we learn that none of us are gods. That we're all human. Tragically human. And that we, all of us, make mistakes right up to the very end of our lives. You will learn that one day. And when you do, you also know what it is to forgive. Perhaps even your father. You see, Eric, it's I who need you now. Oh, Dad. Dad. Well, son, there, my boy. Mr. Brand. Doctor, is she? No, oh, Doctor, tell me. Your little girl will recover. Say it again. Please. She'll be well again after a long rest. Thank you. Thank you. You'd better rest, too. The nurses will do everything. I'll be back for soon. You'll live, Eric. You'll have your sister again. <laughs> Goodbye, Eric. Goodbye, my son. Olga. Olga, wait. Yes? Don't go. Please. Margaret. And Marie is asking for you. She wants you to stay. And so do I. You. After all the pain I've caused you. Life renews itself, Olga. Things die and are born again in the spring. Our love can live again if we want it to. Will you let me try? Will you? Welcome home, Holger. Welcome home, my darling. Margaret, home, home. The curtain falls on Intermezzo, starring Herbert Marshall, Ingrid Bergman, and Gail Patrick. While our stars are preparing to take their well-deserved curtain calls, I'd like to ask every woman in our audience to look at her hands. While you do this, just suppose that your left hand looked rough and red while your right hand remained smooth and white. But that would be simply awful, Mr. Ruick. Oh, no woman would like that. You're quite right, Sally. And yet, hundreds of women went around for weeks with just such a strange contrast between their two hands. Behind this remarkable fact, there's a story. The scene of the story lies in a well-known scientific laboratory where these hundreds of women came every day for weeks in order to make what it's safe to call the most convincing test ever made of dishwashing soaps. Here's what happened in the laboratory. Each woman placed one hand in a dishpan full of Lux suds and her other hand in a pan full of suds from another soap. They all did this for 20 minutes three times a day. Now that's certainly an absolutely fair test, isn't it? One hand in each suds, exactly the same amount of time. Altogether, five leading soaps, including Lux, were tested. And now for the results. Experts examined the hands at the end of the test and said that there was no doubt about which soap was mildest. The verdict went to Lux. In case after case, the Lux hand looked smooth, soft, lovely, while the other hand looked rough, red, unattractive. Well, I'd expect the Lux hand to look smooth and soft, Mr. Ruick. Because I've washed dishes with new quick locks, and I know how marvelous it is to your hands. Yes, and every woman can prove this for herself if she'll just buy a box of new quick locks and use it for her dishwashing. No woman wants rough red hands. 
the kind that embarrass her with her friends, make her seem unromantic to a man? Well, you needn't have hands like this. Use new quick lux for dishes. Buy the thrifty big box tomorrow. Your grocer has new quick lux now in the same familiar package at no extra cost to you. You'll like it. It's so fast, so thrifty, and so very kind to hands. Now here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. Tonight as our stars return for a curtain call, we welcome two old friends, Herbert Marshall and Gail Patrick, and one new friend, Ingrid Bergman. I'm really an old friend of the Lux Radio Theater too, Mr. DeMille. When I was here to make Intermezzo, I was a very faithful member of your audience on Monday nights. We'll expect to see you on this side of the footlights frequently, now that you're back in Hollywood. I wish we had a key to the city to give you, Miss Bergman, but we're all out of them at the moment. How do you like our town? Well, everyone has been so nice to me, especially you and Miss Patrick and Mr. DeMille in the Lux Radio Theater this week. I feel at home already. You seemed right at home with a microphone, too. Well, I, I was at radio in Sweden a few times, but it was different there. Hmm. Doesn't a microphone look the same in any language? No, I, I mean you rehearse your place longer. It's more like making a picture. CB's a hard taskmaster, but he's one of the few men I know who make people enjoy work. I've always <laughs> suspected he enjoyed it himself. Before the program, he was telling me about next week's play with a very happy gleam in his eye. What is the play, CB? Next Monday night, Bart, we have a four-star bill. The play is The Young in Heart. And our stars will be Donna Michi, Ida Lupino, Mae Robeson, and Helen Wood. The Young in Heart is the story of a grand old lady who saved a whole family from failure and unhappiness. Of course, Mae Robeson is the grand old lady. And the romantic side of our play is in the hands of Donna Michi, Ida Lupino, and Helen Wood, who next Monday night bring us The Young in Heart. Well, everyone will want a reserved seat for that. I'll put my order in right now, Mr. DeMille. And by the way, don't you think we should introduce Miss Bergman to our good old American game of baseball? I think it's our duty, Gail. We think our Hollywood team's going to be wonderful this year, Miss Bergman. In a week or two, spring practice will be starting. Oh, I'd like to see it. These two are stockholders in the team, Miss Bergman, and I warn you, their enthusiasm is contagious. <laughs> CB, are you still burning the midnight oil over that new picture of yours, Northwest Mounted Police? I cast a very important part just today, Bart. We've looked everywhere for the right personality to play the part of Lupette, the little half-breed girl. And I decided today on Paulette Goddard. I think Gary Cooper, Madeline Carroll, and Paulette Goddard give Northwest Mounted Police a pretty good start. Yes, indeed. We'll be looking forward to it, C.B. Good night. Good night. Night. <laughs> good night. <laughs> Your intermezzo deserves an encore. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Donna Michi, Ida Lupino, Mae Robeson, and Helen Wood in The Young in Heart. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Vernon Steele as Thomas Stenberg, Douglas Scott as Eric Brandt, Anne Todd as Anne Marie, Lou Merrill as Charles Miller, Kenneth Lawton as Doctor, Clara Blandick as Emma, and Charles Strait, Barry Steele, and Ralph Sedan. Ingrid Bergman is appearing through the courtesy of David O. Selznick and is currently being seen in Intermezzo. Herbert Marshall has just finished the RKO picture, Bill of Divorcement. Gail Patrick is now working in the RKO picture, My Favorite Wife. The screenplay of Intermezzo was written by George O'Neill, from an original story by Gustav Stevens and Gustav Molander. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>